Hello, I'm Ajax and welcome back to the reactions for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It is just me again, uh, Sorgan's still on holiday, hope that he's having a wonderful time. But, boy, did he miss a race, because this race weekend is perhaps one of my favourites in history, I can't lie. It was that bonkers, it was that crazy that I am putting it up there. It's one of my favourites, I think. Uh, one, probably my favourite this year is what I'll, what I'll go down, swing in and say, even though there wasn't a British driver that won, the British Grand Prix is a, is a big challenger. It is one of my favourites of the year. And uh, we'll, let's go through all the results, because it was, it was pretty much just, yeah, an insane time. Uh, we start, of course, with the start of the weekend. It was uh, it was a pretty you know we went through the news last time out so we we're, we're gonna jump in with practices and also I have a pretty bad memory usually Shogun's uh, remembering all the stuff that happened but I can say that with practices there was a lot of stop starts basically there was a, a lot of red flags in practices a lot of um, things that needed to be fixed we had Leclerc go out in one of the practices P two. Um, yeah, it was it was it was definitely an interesting weekend. I think we saw this basically for a few years. You know, people crash out in Azerbaijan, and I was expecting a lot more crashes, but no, uh, it was really only practice. The drivers seemed to get their heads into shape after that and uh, get on with it. And uh, yeah, we I mean, in practice one, we saw basically the uh, the Red Bulls being on top. You saw Verstappen on top, Hamilton just behind him. And it looked like, oh, maybe we're going to see that be the case. Then Leclerc was on top for a P2, so it must have been P1 that he didn't finish. And then Russell in P3. So it was it was basically a qualifying where it was like, what's going to happen here? Like, we just didn't know. And it delivered straight away because we saw Lando Norris for the first time in what seems for forever, I can't remember a time before, did not make Q2, didn't make Q3, was out during Q1. Uh, well, sorry, is it Q... I can't remember what order it's in. Anyway, was out straight away, out in 16th. You see, there was a small crash for the Alpine driver of Ocon during the race, uh, and that meant that, uh, or during the final laps of practice, and that meant a yellow flag came out, uh, now, Norris had also made a mistake going into there anyway. Uh, he really shouldn't have been in 16th in the first place. It was a very weird qualifying session where the, where the lap times just kept seemingly getting faster. And uh, yeah, Norris was out straight away. It was, a, it was a really big shock to a lot of us, I think, um, because he's been so good. Um, but yeah, Norris out. Uh, otherwise, we saw sort of the usual suspects. You know, Ocon was at the back. Joe, Bottas, and Ricardo. Um, they were the ones out straight away. But yeah, Norris was the big shock. And that meant that Lance Stroll managed to get in. Lucky duck. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that was huge for the season because obviously Norris was going to have to do this mega comeback drive. Azerbaijan's quite a tricky uh, circuit to overtake. Didn't seem so much. Well, it isn't and it is. It, it, at some points, like... The laps, the laps just so long that you end up losing more than a second. But if you can stay within like that second and basically you want to be four temps down, uh, then you can overtake. And we saw a lot of overtakes this year, but we'll get to that later. The second part was a little less shocking. We saw Oli Berman uh, go out in P11, but otherwise Sonoda, Hulkenberg, Stroll, Ricardo, not too many shocks there. I guess Hulkenberg, you, you sort of expect to do better. And uh, yeah, Ricardo seems to be struggling, and that would be definitely something we talk about in uh, the next episode. Um, but I guess the big shock was Gazzi was also out, but got disqualified. Now he got disqualified for a weird reason, but it seemed to like insinuate that he was just properly cheating. Uh, and obviously, I say him, I mean the team. Um, but yeah, the team like made changes to the car that just weren't fit for it so i'm not sure how i fit there again not sure if i should be the one to break these stories very bad at like memory um but hey look i'm here um 
And then we go into Q1. Now, Q1 was a little crazy, a little less crazy. We basically figured out who was on top straight away um, because they just put in a incredible lap time straight away in Q1 that was going to give them the give them the uh, sorry Q3 that gave them basically the 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 starting position of first and that is Leclerc and I must give huge props right now to a uh, Sorgan for that pick because that was mighty like the fact you Sorgan managed to be like yeah you know what Leclerc is going to be Q1 uh, I cannot find the green that we use for this is it that green it is not um you guys know what it is. Um, but yeah, uh, it was just crazy. You know, you, you're never expecting someone to do that well straight away. And, and they've managed to, it, like, it was such a brilliant lap time. It was by far the best in the field. And yeah, absolutely superb from Leclerc and fully deserved Q1. Now I, however, I'm on the red side of things because, uh, again, not the proper red, but we're, we're dealing, we're dealing with the circumstances. I can't believe I can't find the proper green. This is so sad. You'd think it'd be that, but apparently it isn't that. Oh well. Um, I'm on the other side of circumstances because, obviously, it was it was it was a bad qualifying session for Norris, and he did not get P one, uh, so I missed out there. I do have a get some points back for P two, where I put Piastri, uh, the McLaren one two, very much what I was going for this uh, qualifying session. I was wrong, but oh well. Um, meanwhile, Sorgan gets. Uh, <laughs> I'm really messing this up. Uh, put Norris up there, so basically we both predicted Norris to do well. Norris not doing well. Put us out of whack. That's that's what we can say. Definitely put us out of whack. Um, we both get wrong for P3 because in P3 was obviously science. Now we will talk about in the race science that would drop back pretty early on. And then we have a really surprise pick in. Uh, we both had Russell, which we were both one place off. Russell was P5. But yeah, we had a really surprise Perez. Uh, who's obviously very good at street uh, tracks. But yeah, we were not expecting Perez to do that well. And that sort of uh, sees out our top five. There were, then Verstappen was in P6 behind his teammate. For the first time I can remember this season, it might not be the first time, but it's been so long since that's happened. Hamilton was in P7, uh, but then took a massive engine penalty because he was really quick on the straight. And that is something that kept up the entire weekend. He was really quick on the straight. But ridiculously slow everywhere else then we saw alonso and uh the 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 new driver color pinto in p9 which was just crazy out performing albon who was p10 but color pinto with a outstanding qualifying outstanding and uh yeah really big shouts out to color pinto um, but what was a magnificent weekend, but we'll get onto that later. First of all, we've got to talk about the race, and this race was crazy. I really like this race, is one of the ones that will just stay with me for all time because it had everything, it had every piece of drama you needed. Uh, we start off with the race start, and not much really happens. Obviously, Norris is coming through the field, and he gets through. A bunch of drivers straight away, including what was basically a four-way duel into the first corner on one of the laps. That was an incredible sight to see. And it's it's one we got used to after that Dutch Grand Prix as well. Um, but obviously, he's coming through the field. The other thing that happens is uh, Perez moves ahead of Sainz. And uh, Verstappen moves ahead of... George Russell and uh, that was to stay as that for a, for a long time like that that order stayed with each other for basically the first half of the race like uh, Leclerc got very far ahead for a while um, Piastri dropped off a lot these hard t you know these uh, medium tyres seemed to not really work as well as the hard the hard seemed to just like be a super tyre this race and uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely a struggle for some of our drivers to get used to it. But it wasn't, as I say, Norris was sort of the, the main entertainment of the race. 
But it was those pit stops very early on that really changed the whole perspective of it. Because a lot of our drivers uh, were mediums and they pitted early and they ended up behind Norris and Albon who caused all sorts of carnage. But along with that, there was also... So basically, let's go through it. Perez stops very early on uh, for new tyres and basically is then held up by Norris, who basically has to hold him through the middle section of one of the laps so that Piastri can change tyres and, you know, be A-OK and come out ahead of Perez. And honestly, really good... uh, Like, uh, people talk about Norris sort of being selfish and so on, but I really think he did a mega job there and, you know, uh, helped his team out out loads. Um, So, yeah, I think great shout out for Norris there because it did end up happening that Piastri won the race because of that work that he did very early on. Um, So, yeah, big shout out to him. And uh, there, then we had, uh, yeah, as I say, Piastri comes out and then Piastri, who was like a good five seconds off Leclerc somehow catches him up during this pit stop period and uh, goes for what has to be the most incredible overtake of all time. Honestly, it was ridiculous. Piastri did like crazy turn one, outbreaks himself. It is an absolutely outstanding overtake and well worth like the victory. I, I, honestly, you have to go and watch it. It is a superb overtake. Definitely my favourite of the race. There was a lot of overtakes this race. But that like the balls on that were was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. Piastri, absolutely outstanding overtake. And whilst that's happening, Sainz also gets in no man's land, uh, a long way off. Perez is right behind both Piastri and Leclerc, so he's in that battle. Uh, and that battle will go on for a lot of laps. We'll talk about that. And then uh, the biggest thing is Verstappen gets stuck behind at the Albon Norris train and just struggles lap after lap, which allows George Russell, who was like seven seconds behind, to catch up and overtake Verstappen. And along with that, as soon as Albon pits, uh, which, you know, Albon, Norris was sort of using Albon throughout the race as DRS, you know, protection to Verstappen behind. As soon as Albon pits, like, Norris somehow makes a gap to Verstappen, then pits, and then we'll talk about him later, but that was an outstanding drive from Norris. And I made a small prediction to my brother before the race. I thought he would get P3 in the race. He didn't, but he came so close to it, which was crazy, and we'll get onto that later. But as I said, yeah, Russell finds himself ahead of Verstappen and cruises away from him. And uh, Norris starts catching up with Verstappen. Meanwhile, at the front of the race, this crazy battle goes on where lap after lap, Leclerc tries to overtake Piastri again and again and again. And there's a lot of funny stuff that happens. Like, for example, uh, Piastri does a bad slide into the final corner and it's like, oh, now is Leclerc's time. Leclerc does the same slide. And it's lap after lap where Leclerc just can seemingly not get past him. And during this, basically, Leclerc's tyres start falling off. And uh, he's got Perez right behind him, who keeps sort of, like, joining and then leaving that battle, you know, basically cooling off his tyres. But, yeah, it really screwed Leclerc, whose tyres just went too pot. And that meant that uh, the the driver, the the man, the myth, the legend, um, Perez manages to catch up. But not only Perez, Sites from absolutely nowhere catches up because... Perez just can't get past Leclerc. Leclerc is slow, but not on the straights. And uh, this is like the final three laps. So Perez finally gets past Leclerc, but Leclerc does some brilliant driving to sort of keep him behind. Then Sainz goes to overtake Leclerc, also fails and ends up with a bad corner. And then the two are going side by side into the fourth corner of the track or the third corner. Um... On that straight, after the next to the start finish straight, uh, and they crash. They crash in what is just a incredible moment in F1, and obviously really sad because these are two drivers. You know, I know Science has got a seat at Williams, but obviously he's trying to make the most of his Ferrari drive, and then Perez is trying to make the most of his Red Bull career because 
You know, he's got talked up. He's getting talked bad about a lot recently. And this is one of his best drives. And uh, the fact that he just completely outdid Verstappen is incredible. And yeah, he crashes out. It was it was immense to see. It was crazy to see. And I can't believe it happened. Um, but yeah, that I keep saying, but yeah, I apologize. A very messy video for me. It was just so such an exciting Grand Prix. Um, but so whilst that's happening, George Ross, uh, sorry, Lando Norris catches up with Max Verstappen, overtakes, has done loads of fastest laps. And Max Verstappen, as that crash happens, goes in the pits and puts on soft tyres to get the fastest lap at the end of the race. But of course, he can't do that because there's a virtual safety car. And that's how the race ends. Piastri is over 10 seconds ahead. George Russell from out of nowhere ends in P3. Norris gets P4. Verstappen P5. That doesn't really change the point difference between them, which was free anyway. Alonso, who was in the middle of nowhere all race, of course, Verstappen just came out in front of him, but because of the virtual safety car, nothing could be done. Um, it ends up in P6, and then Albon and Colin Pinto in P7 and P8, picking up 10 points for Williams, a massive 10 points, absolutely incredible for them. Hamilton P9, now I do need to mention Hamilton this race, he had a stinker. Now it's obviously because of the car setup. The car setup seemed awful for him. Just had to constantly cool down his tyres. Was having such an awful time all race. And uh, yeah, it does need, need mentioning, right? Because obviously it looks bad on him. But it was just an awful car setup. An awful race for him. And um, yeah, it seems to be a Mercedes, a Mercedes mistake rather than a Hamilton mistake. But we will get to that later. And then Oli Behrman in P10. Which means... All British drivers, uh, four British drivers in the top 10. Um, I also do need to mention Hulkenberg, P11, uh, but that was pretty much it, yeah. Um, you know, bad races for Ocon. Uh, Stroll ended up uh, retiring. He was very far back. Uh, Sonoda DNF'd after being crashed into by... I can't remember who crashed into him. Someone crashed into him and unfortunately he had to retire. Uh, I think it might have been Stroll, uh, but I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, awful, awful race for them, but a brilliant race for Piastri, who well-deserved, very well-deserved victory. That means Lando Norris was not our top driver of the day, but good shout by Sorgan again. Uh, for the Piastri losing one position. Oh, that was not the text that I wanted to do. He's not joined Aston Martin. I apologise. I am messy with this. It is very late at night when I'm recording this as well. I should add, it is extremely late at night. Um, so we've got Leclerc getting P2. Big, big shouts there. And I, I've got to, got to say well done to Sorgan. Then we... Uh, I don't think any of us get points unless... I get a point, a cheeky point, for Verstappen. Um, <laughs> which really saves my weekend. Because uh, I feel like Sorgan's about to get a lot of points. As we go into... Oh, fastest lap. Sorgan gets a point there. Uh, Norris with fastest lap. I went for Hamilton. Unfortunately, roll should have gone for Norris. What was I thinking? But we go into least impressive team. I do have to scroll up for this. Um, one of the best of the season. Now, we start with least impressive team, which uh, I'm going to go for Toro Rosso. Same with Sorgan. I don't think Aston Martin deserve it. Red Bull probably don't deserve it because, uh, like, Perez had one of his best weekends and was pretty competitive. Uh, but, yeah, disappointing result. Overall, definitely disappointing. Least impressive driver. Uh, now... Sorgan's put for Stappen. I'm going to put out there that I think Hamilton probably deserves it, even though it wasn't really Hamilton's fault. But still, you know, you expect sort of Hamilton to be this incredible driver um, that's just like up there all the time. And bear in mind, Russell's up there. But again, it's sort of to do with the car. So I feel like maybe for Stappen is the case. Either way, we're both not getting a point for that. I, I was sure that Sorgan put 
uh, Verstappen. So uh, I was shocked by that, at least. Um, then we get to the most impressive team. Now, I feel like there's one team that deserves this, one team that did incredibly all weekend, and you know, Sorgan agrees with me. It has to be the Williams. So we're both not getting points again. That Williams was just incredible. Like, uh, the weekend it had, the fact they got so many points, the fact, you know, Lewis Hamilton couldn't overtake Colo Pinto has to have big shouts as to Conor Pinto as well who was uh, so lovely on social media about Hamilton it was it was pretty it was pretty awesome to see uh, sorry that's meant to be red um, but yeah uh, so that was a big shock I will say at least that uh, the Williams was just so quick this weekend obviously they're quick in Italy but this race does have a lot of corners even though it has that big straight um, and they seem to just set up the car perfectly for both of them and they were both on different strategies. Of course, Albon started on the hards. That didn't mean Albon finished ahead. But uh, And then Colo Pinto started the softs. I also think Albon might have had a chance at getting Alonso given more laps. But uh, sadly not. And then finally, for the most impressive driver. Behrman is a really good shout. He obviously gets a point. Uh, and he had a great weekend. Piastri deserves the shout because he was incredible. But I am going to have to give it Colo Pinto just because of the weekend as a whole. The fact that he finished ahead of his teammate in Q3 on his second ever race. Just incredible. And uh, yeah, as a whole, Colo Pinto's weekend was just yeah mind-blowingly mind good. And then finally we get to our... Uh, extra bowl predictions now mine is wrong there was not a red flag in the race there was in qualifying but not the race uh, in practice but not in the race so it's not going to count but because of the crash that happened at the end of the race this did come true it's mclaren overtakes uh red bull racing and ferrari and mercedes close the gap to Red Bull in the World Drivers Championship. And it did happen. So I'm going to have to give it, right? Like, it shouldn't have happened. It should be said. It definitely shouldn't have happened. But it did. Like, out of nowhere, they, they, they've they lost their position in first in the World Drivers Championship. And it feels like so long since we've said that. It's been so, so long since that's been a thing. Um, so what an incredible weekend for the for the F1 for the World Drivers Championship and uh, yeah I I can't wait until Singapore I will add the points by the way we should add the points and figure out who who's where um, but I can't wait to Singapore there's already a lot of stuff happening for Singapore that we'll talk about uh, tomorrow, I think the next episode will come out tomorrow um, so yeah, it's going to be hella exciting and I'm I'm just so so positive about it but, with that being said that means that for the first time in, well, since the Dutch Grand Prix, but if, since a long long time, that uh, Sorgans gained two points on me you have to go back to, I'm guessing Imola, yeah Imola. oh wait, no, not even Imola Mind when, when was the first time? Last time, Sorgan gained po Hungary. They gained one point on me. Austria. They didn't gain a point on me. Canada. They didn't gain two points. It was Miami. Damn, a long time ago. And uh, that means the points are ever closer. It has gone down to, I'm guessing this might have not updated, uh, but it will go down to eight, uh, uh, go down to six, sorry. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for this, for, for being around for this very rambly uh, one. I apologise it was so rambly, you know, uh, it's very late. Um, oh no, it's eight points, there you go. They brought it down from ten, of, well, from, wait. Am I done? Oh, it's because I put four mine. There you go. Two, two, and then 
four. There you go. That's better. That's better. It's down to six. That's what. Oh, it's down to four. It's very close. And Sorgan thought they were out of it. I'm sure the next Grand Prix is going to be amazing. Thank you very much for sticking on by me. And as always, peace.